McHugh from GOI. It's great to be here. This has been a fantastic meeting so far. It's really fun to be participating in it. What I'm going to talk with you about today is geospatial predictive analytics. And this is a unique integration of commercial best practices, good social science research, and geography. And as one of the earlier speakers mentioned, we can learn a whole lot from looking at the commercial sector, which takes us to the um, adult beverage section in the supermarket. And we know that product positioning, location are highly correlated with sales, something that the salespeople know, so they fight vehemently and very competitively to position their products. We also know that bad guys are similarly sensitive to space. They need to have an environment where they can let, um, get potential victims or targets. They also need an ena enabling environment that will allow them to perpetrate the crimes that they're interested in committing. We've put together a model that incorporates um, known incidents, event data. We pull in human and physical geography. We use a rule induction modeling approach, and we are able to generate um, output that goes out into the geospatial environment, which makes it operationally relevant and readily actionable for use in the field. We're going to use um, the LRA as an example for today. So we're looking at the tri-border region. The dots on the map are from the ACLA database. We're looking at 2008 to 2010 inclusive. As you look at the, uh, the output from the assessments, um, the thing that's important to note is these are where events are likely to occur, not only in the future, but displacement in response to action in the region, also hidden or unreported patterns of crime, which is important with the LRA. This enables us to anticipate, get in front of the situation rather than chasing it. We can also look at the factors. And as we talked about before, we're looking for victim populations and locations. They prefer um, concealment, quiet locations where they have the standoff to, to do their acts without people um, interfering, particularly security. The marketing community also knows that if we segment the population, we can make more targeted efforts. They sell phones differently to adults, to families, to teenagers. Similarly, with crime analysis, if we break it out by crime type, we have a much better chance of getting better factors. With the LRA, we're, we broke it out into looting, abduction, incidental homicide, which occurred in response to these other events, and murder, which was a, an exclusive murder-only event. And as we look at the first map, um, this is the, these are the looting incidents. You will see right away that it's different from the larger assessment, which shows that we were smart in segmenting this out because the pattern, the geospatial pattern, was different than the LRA attacks were at large. So we're already gaining some insight. We also see um, one of the things that jumps out is this is highly correlated with the abductions. And we know within um, the abductions that there's a small segment where they're actually kidnapping people to help them at, at serve as porters to move the material that they've stolen. The abduction pattern, also different. We've um, marked the IDP camp locations on this map. You see that it's different as well from the looting. Again, segmenting further gives us greater insight, gives us some granularity to understand it. As we look at the factors, um, Willie Sutton supposedly said, why does he rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Why does uh, the LRA function in certain areas? Because that's where the victims are. IDP camps, um, some of the other population clusters in the region are very attractive to them. As we look at the incidental homicides, it's starting to move out from the looting and the abduction events, but again, a very different spatial distribution, which is important if we want to intervene and change outcomes in that part of the world. As we look at the factors associated with this, distance from murders turns out to be a very important factor, which again suggests to us that there's a meaningful, reliable difference between the murders and these incidental homicides that's important and can be modeled and refined further. And finally, we'll have the map of the murder locations, and you will see that this functions almost as a complement to the incidental homicide map, suggesting that something behaviorally is very different in those regions. And again, when we look at the factors, it shows up that it is very dif different uh, um, from the incidental homicides and is in different areas. So we're starting to get a better understanding, and we realize that it is important to further segment this space to better understand and perhaps change outcomes for people in the region. We're able to pull this together and use it in a GOPDF environment. I would invite you to come by our tech demo display so you can interact, and as um, Patrick mentioned yesterday, to be able to use this to collaborate, to come up with some novel solutions together by sharing our multidisciplinary expertise is really important. 
So in closing, we can use advanced analytics to be able to surface trends and patterns that are actionable. We can optimize scarce resources. We can improve our security profile. But most importantly, we're able to get in front of events in the region. We can predict, prevent, mitigate, change outcomes for those we serve. Thank you.